Under the leadership of Pastor Small and Tracy We teach you to dream, to believe, to succeed Reach your destiny So welcome 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 to Bible study with Pastors Mark and Tracy Davis. This is Pastor Mark Davis. <laughs> we greet you guys with Jesus joy. We want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. We're excited about getting a chance to uh, share with you tonight. Uh, we're multi-streaming, so I'm trying to make sure I greet everybody. Hey, YouTube. Hey, TikTok. Hey, everybody. Uh, if you don't mind, go ahead and share, 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 and get something the right way. We believe that we have a powerful message for you. Honey, I'm going to let you take it over for a little bit and um, pray. And then I can kind of kick us off from what we're going to be talking about tonight. All right, let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share another lesson on Wednesday night. We pray for each and every person, oh God, that's watching or live or the rebroadcast. We pray that something we said, oh God, to help them on their Christian journey, oh God. We just pray, God, you'll anoint your servant, oh God, with teach with power, but yet simplicity, oh God. We just pray today will be a wonderful lesson, oh God, and we pray for each and every person, oh God on this broadcast tonight. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. Amen. 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 Well, hey again, everybody. Uh, and hello, uh, TikTok. <laughs> We're so glad everybody could be here. We want to talk tonight um, from the standpoint of, and I'll tell you where this came from, then, honey, you can just take it, because I know you got something to share. <laughs> but I <laughs> You know, I was thinking about people that are dealing with traumatic situations, you know, and different triggers and things like that. And so as I reflected on that, I was just thinking about trauma and how, you know, a lot of times a person can feel like they're stuck in traumatic situations. They continue to rehearse it. And I wanted to give them hope tonight that you can go from tra trauma to triumph. And, of course, we had talked about, you and I talked about some different stories or case studies, as I like to call them, that we can reference. So... We want to talk tonight about Joseph. I think he's the, the classic example. And if we continue in this study next week, there's a, probably another one we could hit. But I feel like this is a great way for us to kick it off. And um, if you guys are taking notes, this is a great uh, time to write down that we're going to be talking about. It's more than a dream. It's an assignment. And Joseph is the person that we're citing, of course. And we want to really look at his situation from a traumatic standpoint. You know, a lot of times we just kind of glaze over the story and don't go into detail as to what he had been through, you know, what he went through. And so I just kind of want to slow it down a little bit and just give people the opportunity to understand that trauma is real. And a lot of times if you've had some traumatic experiences growing up as a kid, some people kind of brush it over like, oh, you know, that happened when you were a kid, get over it. And I just want to give people the opportunity to say, you know what, we see you, you know, we understand you know, I know as an adult, as a woman of God, having to deal with traumatic situations that I had once swept under the rug. And if you don't deal with them, they will continue to surface in different ways. Uh, for some people, the trauma will surface in the form of an illness. For some, you know, they're angry all the time. For some, they're withdrawn. Um, whatever the trauma is, and of course, we can't cover everybody's um, types of trauma or their situations, but this is really just to kind of let you know that God can handle the hard cases. And when I see this situation with Joseph, this is a hard case. You know, we can read it in a few scriptures, but all of this happened like over a 25 year period, right? From, I think from the time that he was given this dream uh, up until the time it actually manifested. So before we, you know, go further, you want to say anything about that? Well, it's funny you said that it happened over a period of time because when it first occurred, he was only 17 years old, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you think about it, he's a 17-year-old teenager in chapter 37 of Genesis. And of course, the story is found in 37 all the way through to about 42nd of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And it's a fascinating story. If you've never read it, you need to. You need to really focus on it. But we're going to break down some of it, obviously, today, because you take a 17-year-old teenager that has this dream from God, right? And I mean, God showed him this dream of how he's going to be ruling over his brothers and so forth and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he made the mistake that a lot of us do, and we tell somebody, right? Mm -hmm. When it's probably not time to tell them. And so one of the things I wrote down here is that you have to be careful who you share your dream with. Mm 
Because mm-hmm. not everybody's going to be celebrating you because you have this great dream that you want to rule the world. Mm-hmm. But but God placed it in your heart. You have this ambition. This, you're an entrepreneur, and you don't want to work a nine to five. You want to do some things that God has placed on your heart, and you t- share with somebody instead of supporting you. They're jealous of you, mm-hmm. or they do something to sabotage you, right? And so here's a 17 year old boy that his brothers decide to you know kill him, really. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. the whole one have to talk him out of it, really, and they end up selling him, you know, um, into slavery. So. You think about 17, and then we're going to fast forward, obviously, towards the end of our discussion, you know, whether it be today or tomorrow or the next week, to show you how God was in all of it through this traumatic experience. This young teenager, you know, God kind of was with him through the whole process of the pit to the prison to the palace. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to get into it and show that you and I have the same situation Maybe not, not like Joseph, but we have something traumatic, right? Mm-hmm. I think all of us really have gone through a traumatic experience with COVID, right? Where we, we had a lot of situations. But you have a personal situation that had nothing to do with COVID. And it was traumatic, right? Mm-hmm. A divorce, uh, you know, separation, a loss of job, you know, a, a family situation. Whatever it may be, right? You went into bankruptcy mm-hmm. and it affected your credit. And you feel like, I, you know, I can't recover from that. Mm-hmm. Well, the tr- truth of the matter is... God can help us through whatever situation. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to share six things with you today mm-hmm. that I believe will bless you, you know, with dealing with a traumatic situation. Right. And even when we're talking about traumatic situations, I was thinking about, you know, some people have been through, you know, some terrible things in their childhood mm-hmm. and they're still carrying it, whether they were mm-hmm. molested, whether they were raped on date rape or something like that, whether, you know, they um, saw a loved one die. I mean, it's just, there's some things, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe they were abused as a child, you know, just Mm -hmm. excessive beatings and things like that. And so certain things trigger them. This is so important because I have just really been dealing or or hearing and growing and, you know, in this particular area for myself. And I feel like that others go through the same thing, but nobody ever really want to talk about it. I think we talked about last week, anxiety and depression and things like that. Mm-hmm. Those are the taboo. You don't talk about those things, especially if you're a Christian. You can't admit mm-hmm. that you have some issues. You know, you mm-hmm. have some situations. And so it's the same thing here mm-hmm. with trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, I want people to understand that God, even though he didn't cause the trauma, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't, he didn't put uh, Joseph in this pit. You know, but he was with Joseph and God has been with you, even though you feel like, have you been with me, God? Why did you allow this guy? You know, those questions can come up. Why did this happen? Why am I going through this now? Okay, because, you know, we're talking about this from a past tense standpoint for Joseph or for somebody that's watching. You're in a situation now. You're still dealing with the trauma. You know, some of the people that I have uh, coached and counseled and things like that, when they when they talk with me on their sessions, it's amazing, you know, the trauma that they deal with from a, just young women, you know, and still carrying it. And I want to say this um, before we move on, you know, we're pastors. We're not, um, what do you call it, psychiatrists or whatever. And so it's okay to have a therapist, right? It's okay to go and sit down and talk to someone that's professionally trained. Yeah, from a spiritual standpoint, I would say make sure they're a Christian so that, you know, that your beliefs line up with theirs if you're a believer, but get some help. Don't just suffer silently. Don't suffer privately. Don't try to, because it'll show up. It'll show up in you shrinking back. You know you need that promotion or whatever, but there's something in you that makes you fearful because from a child you were uh, verbally abused. You'll never be nothing. You're ugly. You're fat. You know, all those kind of things that you didn't realize that you internalized. I don't know. Give us, hit us in the comments. Is this making, is, is this touching you? Is this making any sense? Give us some hearts. Let us, let us know that we're coming down your street because I believe that God wants you healed. You know, he wants you healed. Baby, go ahead. No, go ahead. Now, you know, when you said that, you just remind me of that old saying that was so wrong. And for years, people used to write, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never harm me, right? Mm-hmm. And when you think about that, how we've all heard that as kids, and people, yeah, I hear people it. today <laughs> still uses that term. And I think finally in our culture, I, I think I'm starting to see a turn where people are recognizing that words and situation where have nothing to do with physical can be just as traumatic Absolutely. as somebody physically getting into a car wreck or going to war or you know seeing somebody die or whatever the case may be because 
you know, those verbal abuse, right, for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we know a lot of times spouses go through that, right? Mm -hmm. Especially a female a spouse where you have this verbal abuse from a husband. Mm -hmm. You know, it happens both ways. Both I guess. ways, yeah. But, but we know it happens more the, the, the other way. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to say a lot of times that will affect you if you don't deal with it. And yeah. you know, a lot of people in this past were saying just put it on the rug. You know, well, you know, it happened to me about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're still dealing with it, if you still hadn't processed it, if you haven't recovered from it, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you hold, you know, hatred in your heart to someone because you hadn't forgiven them mm -hmm. and how that manifests itself in in sickness and all the kind of things that we now know because doctors have looked at these things and studied those things and know that you've got to deal with these things. So mm -hmm. what we're talking about tonight may be a little deep for some people, but it's, 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 needed. it's needed. It's needed. It, it's needed because we know too many people mm -hmm. that pastors talking about that falls in the category of just never want to talk about it or suffer silently. Mm -hmm. Well, God doesn't want you to suffer silently, right? Mm -hmm. He's here to help you. And that's one of the reasons why we're teaching this lesson, right? That's because right. we know we serve a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. Mm -hmm. And just like Joseph, mm -hmm. even when he was in prison, mm -hmm. God never forgot about him. Mm -hmm. the, most of the, the most popular phrase, as you look through all the chapters in Joseph, one of the most popular phrases I kept seeing is, and God was with Moses, and uh, Joseph, and God was with Joseph, and God had favor, Joseph had favor with God. All of those were a reoccurring theme, mm -hmm. whether it was in Potiphar's house, it was in the prison, or was it when he was in the palace. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. That phrase kept coming over and over again throughout like three or four chapters. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? That tells you that God was concerned about Joseph because he put a dream in him. And he was going to see it to completion, as Galatians tell us, that you know, he who began a good work in you shall see it to completion. Mm -hmm. And so you got to remember that. If he put that dream in you, if he put that desire in you to, to start that business, to go to school, to finish that degree, he'll see it to completion. And you can't give up on it. And we're going to talk about that as we share these uh, six things, okay? <laughs> Amen. One more thing that dropped in my spirit is PTSD. Mm -hmm. You know, again, uh, there's somebody that's dealing with PTSD. And so this is a word for you. This is a word for you to be free. This is a word for you that you'll be healed from that. And you have felt like this is how your life is going to be. And I, I don't, I can't even imagine what a person that's mm -hmm. been in a war type situation or like mm -hmm. you said, some other type. Because yeah, you can have PTSD yeah. from, from various things. Right, right, but right. that dropped in my spirit. PTSD. Mm -hmm. So somebody may be suffering from that. So God, again, no matter what the trauma is, he can take you from that trauma to triumph. But you need to hear lessons like this so that you can release your faith for it. Faith comes by hearing. Okay, so you have to hear this. Uh, something in your spirit should be leaping to say, okay, I can be free. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can be free from the trauma that I have experienced from whatever extreme it is. And uh, whether it's something in childhood, and I love that you brought up that Joseph was 17 years old. Somebody had a traumatic experience when they were a teenager. Mm -hmm. And they're still dealing with it. And so mm -hmm. I didn't want to rush that because I know that people that I have talked to, in particular women, um, suffer a lot, you know, and, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, if a person cries at the drop of hell, you're so sensitive, but you don't know why they're crying. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it is that's hurting them. And I'm just learning and have learned that you got to let people uh, heal. And the, the same way you need to heal, others need to heal. Mm -hmm. We need to allow them to heal. We need to allow them to cry. We need to allow them to vent if they need to, because they got to get it out. The enemy wants to, he operates in darkness and he wants you to suffer silently. He wants you to pull the drapes. He wants you to pretend that all is, you know, is, everything's okay. And you got this smile on, but you're hurting. I, I had gotten this example yesterday where, you know, the mom, if everybody in the family gets sick, the mom still got to get up and make sure she makes soup for everybody. Make sure she take care of everybody, even though she's sick too. Even though she doesn't feel well either, she's got to make sure she takes care of everybody else. And that's the situation. There are a lot of moms, and I'm just saying this, somebody needs to hear this. There are a lot of moms that you are hurting, that you're dealing with your own trauma, okay? You're dealing with your own stuff, but you're trying to help somebody else with theirs. God is saying tonight he wants to help you with yours. Mm. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Right. Babe, do you want to move on? Yeah, well, we're going to jump in the first thing that we want to share. Um, so how to get somebody from that yeah. trauma. To okay. trial. Okay. Excellent. And one of the first things we have here is rely upon God no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. There's this guy that, I don't know if it's a local guy or his national guy, no matter what, trust God no matter, no matter what, what. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The sign was like, you know, it's got red, white, and blue on it. Mm -hmm. It was all over the place, right? You know Rob's dad was putting that over? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought it was such a profound statement. Mm -hmm. Trust God no, no matter, matter what. what. 
Mm-hmm. Every time I see it, it just it just reminds me of Proverbs three, four, and five. Of course, right? Mm-hmm. You know, trust in the Lord in all thy heart, and lean not on on, on thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge, acknowledge him. him, and he will direct your path. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you think about that, and you think about trusting God, whatever your situation is, you got to trust that God will help you, that God will give you a plan of action, right? One of the things about, you know, um, faith is that he'll always give you a plan of action, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to figure out what I need to do, what I need to do to, 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 to overcome this situation. Do I do do I do I need to go to a professional counselor? Do I need to, you know, go There's talk? There's a word I was looking for, counselor. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what do I need to do to deal with this because it's there, it's obvious it's there, it's bothering me, yes. and, 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 and I haven't really dealt with it. You know, it may be 10 years, maybe 15 years, it doesn't matter how long it's been, if it's still there, right? That's right. And, and you can be delivered from it, right? It's another thing, I've heard people make statements like this, you know, you'll never recover from this. Mm. I don't believe that, you That's know, right. you That's never right. recover from this, you know, once you, you, you blah, 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 and I'm not going to give you the examples, you'll never recover from it. Well, let's say that God is not capable of healing you totally, and this can't be true. That's right. Right? It, it, it's contrary to everything this word says. Right? God is able to do it exceedingly and abundantly. Right? There's nothing too hard for God. I, I just hear these scriptures when people say that, and I'm thinking if if that's true, then there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible. Might as well take them out because it says the opposite. Right? And so, with your situation, if you trust in God. And lean on, on your own understanding. And that's why I wanted to use that scripture because oftentimes we figure I can handle it, okay? Mm-hmm. I know how to um, you know, um, navigate through the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, because I've been through it before, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you, you, this time you may not be able to do it on your own. Mm-hmm. You need some help. You mm-hmm. need mm-hmm. God's help, right, through the Holy Spirit. And so you have to trust on him and lean on, on your own understanding, you know, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And then he's going, he'll direct your path, right? He'll direct you in what to do. And so you're not listening to this by accident. Come There's on. someone that came on here, whatever the platform you came on here through, and you're like, wow, they're talking about traumatic experience. Yeah. They're talking about dealing with it. Yeah. And you're like, wow, I, I never really dealt with mine. Or it may have reminded you of something you've been through, mm-hmm. and you thought you were healed from it. Mm-hmm. And tears came in your eyes mm-hmm. when you heard us talking about it. Well, mm-hmm. that's because God wants to help you. Mm-hmm. He wants you to deal with it. Mm-hmm. All right? And that's we're going to help you as we walk through these, these six things. That's good. So you want to rely upon God no matter what. No matter what it looks like, no matter what anybody else has said, God has to be the one that, God, I'm trusting you. I'm Amen. trusting you that even as I'm listening to this message tonight, that he, he wants you to hear it, okay, mm-hmm. so that you'll get back to relying upon him. You mm-hmm. may have been relying upon your own strength, mm-hmm. because when you say it, and all, trust in the Lord, with right. all your, trust in the Lord with all your heart, in mm-hmm. all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. So you've been looking for direction. How do I get free from this? Mm-hmm. How, do I, how do I release this? How do I get healed from this? How do I get delivered from this? How do I let it go? Well, he says, trust in me. Rely upon me. And, and that's what's so beautiful about this. You can be a person that has been through so, so much. Mm-hmm. And you feel like, man, I'll be depressed like this forever. Mm-hmm. Or I'll feel, you know, I'll be in this situation forever. But mm-hmm. then God, mm-hmm. he shows up, right? Giving you the answer. So I think that's powerful. Mm-hmm. So that's number one. Number two, you want to... Focus on the vision. Now, we put in here focus on the vision because you have to have a vision of where you want to go. If you don't want to stay in your pit, in your situation, you have to have a desire of where you want to go. You have to know what your what your B looks like. I want to go from A to B. Well, what does B look like? What does healed look like? So you and once you know what that is, right? I'm tired of being sad. I want to be happy, right? I'm tired of being sick. I want to be healed. You have to know what that is so you can continue to focus on it no matter what. Honey, you want to say something on that no, as far as when you when you're I love when you mentioned that as um, you were reading through Genesis uh, with uh, Joseph's story. And God was with them. And God was with them. Because, and what was happening in that situation, God was reinforcing that dream. Mm-hmm. He was reinforcing that vision to keep him focused on it. Like I gave you this dream. And we said at the beginning, Joseph had more than a dream. It was an assignment. Mm-hmm. Right? And so a lot of times when you have this big assignment on your life, the enemy will use others to attack you. And so that's what happened with, with um, Joseph's situation. The enemy used the brothers because he didn't want the dream to come to pass. He didn't want Joseph to be able to fulfill his assignment. So you may say, why did I go through this? Well, I want you to pay attention. You may have an assignment on your life. 
Mm-hmm. You may have that it's bigger than a dream. It's an assignment that you have. There's somebody you're supposed to touch, right? And the enemy may have done all that he could to to crush your dream, to crush your hope, to crush you. But the mm-hmm. Lord wants you to know tonight that you have more on your life than just a dream. It's an assignment. A lot of people, oh, she's a dreamer. There's the dreamer. There's the dreamer. But no, you say, I got more than a dream. I have an assignment. Somebody put that in the comments. I have an assignment. I have an assignment. I believe that you do have an assignment. And I do believe that part of it is for you to continue to rely upon God no matter what. And for you to continue to focus on the vision. Focus on where you want to be. Focus on what the promise. If nothing else, the promise. And all the promises of of, of God are received by faith, right? And that's why we keep teaching this. Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You've got to know. You've got to know that God is for you. You've got to know that no matter what anyone else has done or said or or even tried to prophesy on you, that God has a promise for you. Praise God. And I just you want know, you to get that. We're just giving a scripture to read. And I, want, I just want you to real quick. Third John, we, we know the scripture. We, we, we use it for different things sometimes. But, mm-hmm. I, but as I hear you talking, it's, it's third John verse two. It says, beloved. I pray that you may prosper in all things all okay. and be in hell just as your soul prospers. Mm-hmm. That's my that's our prayer for you. That's mm-hmm. God's prayer for you. Mm-hmm. That you will prosper in all things. Mm-hmm. That's that's a sound mind. That's mm-hmm. peace mm-hmm. that surpasses all understanding. That, that's health, mm-hmm. right? That's all the things that God wants for you. That's the John 10, 10 things, right? Mm-hmm. The, come that you may have life. life. And have it more abundantly. Yes. You know, you God wants you to have life and have life abundantly, living life when you're enjoying life, right? Mm-hmm. Not being stressed out and feel like, man, am I ever gonna feel normal, right? Mm-hmm. That's, good. That's how the enemy gets in and people lose hope, you know. That's one of the biggest causes of suicide, by the way. You know? Where the enemy comes in because you're going through some stuff and you've never dealt with it, and then the enemy says, Well, why don't you just take your life? I mean, you might as well, you, you know, you're not enjoying life. No. You, you can't get to the point where you lose hope. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's so important to deal with whatever traumatic situation and ask God to help you, and he will, right? Hallelujah. And you need to get it so you can get free because mm-hmm. God wants you to prosper mm-hmm. in all things. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think the, the Holy Spirit had me read the scripture because somebody may think that it, it's never going to change for me. Maybe God maybe God is punishing me. I heard people say that. Mm-hmm. Maybe God is punishing me. No, mm-hmm. that's the pits from hell. God is not punishing you. No, no. no. God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. Mm-hmm. That's what he wants, right? Mm-hmm. He said the, 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 the uh, enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm-hmm. That's what John 10.10 10 says. Go and meditate on that. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe me, go and meditate on that. And let the Holy Spirit get that in your spirit mm-hmm. that he wants you to have the abundant life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got to focus on that vision. And I love when you, you put that with the vision is what? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. prosper and be in good health. Right? Mm-hmm. But above all things, mm-hmm. I wish I wish that mm-hmm. for you. I want that for you. I want you to be free. Yeah. I, I don't want you to be bound. I don't want this trauma to continue to traumatize you. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm like, you know, I was talking to a person and they were the person isn't even here anymore. They were reflecting. I said, I refuse <laughs> to let somebody that died continue to traumatize Come me. Come on. I refuse. I, I receive Come my on. freedom now. I receive Come my on. deliverance now. Come on. Come right? On. And so you're focused on, you're mm-hmm. laser focused. You're like, no, nah, come hell, high water, low water, no water. I'm mm-hmm. getting what God says I can have. He's already, mm-hmm. I've, you, pastor has shown me in the word that God wishes above all things that I may prosper and be in good health. Well, I'm going to have it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have it. So I have to rem- keep, keep stay focused on the vision. I believe that's how Joseph was able to go through all Absolutely. of that because he kept his focus. It's like I, he kept his focus on what the dream was, what the assignment was. And so, again, I, I'm using these interchangeably because, again, there's somebody that uh, uh, has an assignment and you were ready to quit. We talked about it last week. And so this is for you. But then there's also somebody that you have a traumatic situation that you've been bound for so many years that God wants you to focus on what. Don't, don't focus on what happened. Focus on what he wants to manifest in your life. So this is I, I believe you. You're getting this tonight. Amen. Praise God. Number three, the third thing we're trying to take you from trauma to triumph. You need to remain faithful no matter the season that you're in. And and we want to emphasize a lot of times when you you can go through periods of being angry with God and you just kind of slack off. You know, you going back to your old stuff because it's like this is taking entirely too long. So I don't want to live right. I don't want to live for God. I'm mad. I'm mad at everybody. 
You know, how, how, why did this happen to me? You know, we grew up in the same household and she's okay and I'm not. You know, you could be doing something like that. You know, why does this person always seem like everything's great for them and not, nothing ever great happens for me? But we want to encourage you to remain faithful. Remain faithful because, see, sometimes you can feel like it's taking too long. And that's what the enemy says. Go ahead and quit. That's what he was messing with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to stay focused on his assignment. Mm -hmm. But he had him in the wilderness. He's like, you know, why don't you just, just yeah, why don't you just jump off this building right here, Jesus? Because that was, he was trying to get him to commit suicide. Jump off here. You know, he said, the angels look at you. Let's see. Mm -hmm. You know, you said you're hungry. Why don't you turn these stones? In? No, but, but again, he stayed focused and he remained faithful no matter the season. No matter the season. It's interesting to me that we mentioned season here because Joseph had a pit season. My goodness, how, how the pit is like a grave. When you think about this guy's in this pit, this pit, this, this deep, dark, muddy, slimy. You know, I'm sure there were some reptiles in there. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, this is a nice, let me just wait. No, he, he's thinking this is over. Yeah. So he went from that, okay, to prison. My goodness, you think it was a nice prison? I don't think so. It probably was, you know, when we think about um, prisons here in the U.S., okay, and I have been to either in the name of Jesus, never will. Um, but then when you, you compare things overseas, and they were talking about, oh, my gosh, to, let's take it even further than that. This guy went from a pit to a prison because you had a dream? But don't go, go into the prison yet because I was doing some meditation um, on this Joseph thing, and this, this part hit me. Okay. So don't forget that he was in Potiphar's house, right? Mm -hmm. Before he got to prison, mm -hmm. remember the, the, the Potiphar's wife was trying to get him to sleep with her, right? Mm -hmm. They said it could have went on for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So when they look at the time frame, the historians, it wasn't just a, a year or two. Mm -hmm. She was constantly trying to get him to sleep. He had to go through that experience mm -hmm. of having the, the most powerful man in Egypt's wife Wanted to sleep with him because he was good looking, good looking, and no, no telling what was going on with her and her husband for her to be that persistent. But he had to remain faithful to God, and know that God had a dream for him. And he said, "I can't sin against my God." It wasn't even about her; it was about the God. And the temptation was there. Can you imagine? She, he could have easily slept with her, and probably, you know, fear would have never, never uh, part of it was never found out. But he couldn't do that, so he went through that. This guy had to be uneasy to be in that house all this time, knowing that here is the most powerful man in Egypt's wife trying to get you to mess up. Mm -hmm. that, that, that went on for a while. And the reason I say that is because you may look at your situation and say, it may be it's going on for a while. Well, you know, this maybe this is the time God wants you to fix it now. That's why you're hearing this, this message today. Because it has been going on for a while. And God wants you to fix it now. So it won't go on for another two years or go on for another three years, right? Because I always tell people, you know, when you don't deal with something, when you have the opportunity, it just, it just, it just, uh, it it just doesn't, doesn't go, go away. away. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the enemy will tell you, well, you know, we just push that later. I, I was telling my wife the other day I have a situation going on because my, my mom passed away a couple of years ago. And it's like, I don't want to deal with that. You know, that's too, too painful. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you got to deal with it. That's right. Because it's not just going to go away unless you deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe your traumatic situation needs to be dealt with. And that's why God has you listening to this today. And you're hearing that there's hope. He, he wants me delivered. He wants me to set free. And so this may convince you to take those steps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Take those steps mm -hmm. and begin the process. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Remain faithful no matter the season. As you were talking, the season part, I wanted to hover on that for a little mm -hmm. bit because there are different seasons. I heard Sunday the Lord said building season. <coughs> he was telling me it's building season. Mm -hmm. So you can compare your season to somebody else's. They may be in harvest season, mm -hmm. but you may be in building season. Somebody wow. else may be in pruning season, right? So you can't, you, you can't, uh, forfeit the dream because of the season you're in. Mm -hmm. You can't forfeit it. You you got to make sure you remain faithful That's no matter good. the season, right? Because there were pit seasons, prison seasons, mm -hmm. and palace seasons. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. But again, don't compare the season you're in to somebody else's. If you want to truly get from trauma to triumph, then you got to go through these phases. You have to make sure. So even when you're talking about like mom and all those kind of things, I mean, my goodness, that's painful. That's traumatic. And so you have to be willing to let those layers, layer by layer. 
And I've also learned I can't tell you how to deal with your trauma. That's not my job to say you need to be over that. I made that mistake before. You know, you know, it's been a while now. You need to go ahead and move on. You'll crush somebody because you don't know how many layers there are and you don't know how tender it is. I can help you put the band-aid on, but only you feel the pain. Come on. That's only good. you feel the pain. That's so that's where the compassion of Jesus has to flow out of us. Mm -hmm. That's where God says, bear one another's burdens. We got to get better about this. People will be healed, I believe, mm -hmm. if we have more compassion. Mm -hmm. I believe people would open up more if we know, oh, don't judge me. Mm -hmm. It's like, you still mad about that 15 years later? Mm -hmm. If it hurt them, let's let them deal with it so they won't be hurt anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, because we hear it all the time. Hurt people hurt people. When do we allow the hurt person to get healed so they can stop hurting people? So, again, no matter the season that you're in, remain faithful. And if you have not been faithful, oh, my battery's low on that. Sorry, TikTok. <laughs> can I fix it real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Anyway, we want to we want to remain faithful no matter the season that we in. Go ahead and read, read what you have. No, I was trying to find a Galatian scripture that said, "Put together when your brother sins against you, you know, uh, restore them." And that medical term, uh, you know, Galatians six. Yeah, I, I just don't know what verse, but it's in there somewhere. But the, 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 basically, you know, the, the the verse says that you know when your brother or sister sins against you, restore them gentle, right? And it's a medical term like putting a bone. Back together, it's been broken. Yeah, when they fall. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you fall, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the reason, you know, it kind of came to my mind is because someone is trying to fix someone's situation and they don't realize how deep it is, right? That's why we have to, that's why I have to have Jesus get involved, the Holy Spirit, right? That's why we're walking through this thing because it's a process. Somebody can't just speak a word and it goes away, right? His pastor saying, it's time for you to get over that. It's been a while, you know. You, you've been divorced for five years. You've been, Why are you blah, 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 blah. talking about that? No, you don't understand how deep hurts. the pain was. And you don't understand how deep it was, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's why the Bible warns us such about it. We, we can't condemn people. We can't, we got to restore gentle, right? Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit will use somebody. If he's using you, you better be careful that you say the right things, right? Or you're getting the right counsel based on what the Holy Spirit is doing. And that's what we're doing here today. We're trying to help walk you through by scripture, right? Mm -hmm, Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, number four, um, and again, we're doing the, the parallel here with uh, Joseph. Joseph was able to, you know, continue. He was remaining faithful, um, but he continued to use his gifts. Mm -hmm. And because he used his gift, that made room for him, right? Mm -hmm. That helped him to get free. If, if he didn't use his gifts, he couldn't have been recognized when it was time when there was a problem to be solved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so how does that relate to a, a person? Well, from the standpoint, you have to continue to, to if, if you have a dream, if you have an assignment, you can't, well, I'll wait until they call me. You need to operate in that gift at, at the level that you are, mm -hmm. right? And so, again, it's kind of like two, two things happening here. I just want to make sure that we're, you know, keeping people focused here. But I guess the biggest thing is don't stop. Um, don't, don't get off of, don't lose your focus, but also don't stop being used. Allow the Lord to use you. Like when you were saying the person that God may use you to help somebody else, even though you're going through something. Mm -hmm. He may, I remember um, Joel Osteen's mom, Dodie, was talking about when she was going through cancer. Mm -hmm. She needed healing. but She was praying for others to be healed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the process of her praying for others to be healed, she received her healing. That's God brought it back, back around. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, Lord. Because that's what it is. It's, what do I mean by that? Don't hide the gift. Don't, uh, let, don't stop being used of God. Don't let the compassion of Jesus stop in you just because you haven't received your manifestation yet. Mm -hmm. Still allow God to use you to help somebody else, mm -hmm. right? Uh, let, let, let people know uh, of the, the tests and, and, and the victories that you've had because it will encourage somebody else. You may not be where you want to be, but you can let people know what you've been, what you've been delivered from mm -hmm. because that will give somebody else hope. When I talk, it's like, man, she just tell everything. I tell it because I want you to be free. I share it. I'm, I keep it real because I know what it feels like to be bound. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be depressed. I know what it feels like to be judged. So I share it so that somebody else can get free. Now, in the midst of that, was I still hurting? Was I the mom with the flu? The head there? Yeah. But while I was being, going through my process, I was trying to help somebody else through theirs. Oh. And as a result of that, my freedom came, praise God. Mm -hmm. So that's the hope I want to give you tonight. That's the hope that's saying, hey, you know, Pastor Tracy's saying that God can, yes, he can take you from your triumph, your terrible situation to triumph. He can take you from trauma to triumph. 
Amen. Babe, how, how are we doing on time? Because I don't have I time. I told you it's 8.05. Did you? <laughs> yeah, just Where you told me that? Five minutes while, ago? It's a while ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to stop because we're supposed to stop at 8. So I apologize for those that have to stick with 30 minutes. But um, I hope that you all were blessed tonight. I believe I was blessed even as um, you were sharing. I was just getting so much from you um, as, the, as the Holy Spirit just hovering here. So we just want to pray. Uh, for everybody that's watching tonight, live or watching the replay, if you caught it live, I'm telling you, you can just feel the anointing right now. You can just feel the force of God, and I pray that you'll receive it. And um, and I pray you'll share this because somebody in your life uh, may have been suffering silently, and this may be a, a, a lesson that can bless them. You want to pray, babe? Sure. Okay. All right, let's pray, everybody. Father, we just thank you so much for this lesson tonight. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. We thank you, Lord God, that we are sensitive to your voice, Father God, and that we hear you, Lord God. And this was a lesson that you wanted somebody to hear tonight. You want them to know that you'll take them from trauma to triumph, Lord God. You want them to know that they can be delivered, they can be set free, Lord God. You want them to know, Lord God, that no matter if it's PTSD or whether it's a, a terrible divorce, Lord God, or they had something terrible happen to them as a child or a teenager, that you can take them from that pain, oh God. You can take them from the pit to the palace, Lord God, that there is nothing too hard for you. So I lift them up to you tonight. I pray they'll receive your love. They'll receive your peace. They'll receive your promise, Lord God. And whatever their process is, Lord God, if it's counseling, Lord God, if you want to just set them free right now, whatever it is, oh God, I pray they'll be able to receive it now and know that you love them, that you promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, that you have us just the way you had Joseph. You have us, Lord God. And I just believe for that person tonight, that, that, that you're letting them know that it's more than a dream that they have. They have an assignment on their life. And I pray they'll receive it tonight. I pray they'll reach up and tie a new knot, Lord God. That they'll keep going, Lord God, knowing that you're with them, you're strengthening them, you're encouraging them, and you're leading them as you promised. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 and amen. Praise God. Well, thank you so, so much for hanging out with us for these few, few moments. Pastor will be back on Sunday, 6 p.m. for Sunday Wisdom with Pastor Mark. And uh, with that being said, guys, don't forget to text the word salvation, okay? Text the word salvation to the number 21,000 if you need to reach out. We would love to pray with you, point you in the right direction. If there's like resources like who can I talk to or whatever, we can point you in the right direction if you want to get saved, whatever. Text that word salvation to the number 21000. With that being said, we thank you so much. And we believe that the abundant life is the best life. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. See you next time. Praise the Lord. Well, y'all blessed. Put it in the comments. So we were blessed. We were blessed. We were blessed.